Good evening. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. The victims were in airplanes or in their offices, secretaries, businessmen and women, military and federal workers, moms and dads, friends and neighbors. Thousands of lives were suddenly ended by evil, despicable acts of terror. The pictures of airplanes flying into buildings, fires burning, huge, huge structures collapsing, have filled us with disbelief, terrible sadness, and a quiet, unyielding anger. These acts of mass murder were intended to frighten our nation into chaos and retreat, but they have failed. Our country is strong. A great people has been moved to defend a great nation. Terrorist attacks can shake the foundations of our biggest buildings, but they cannot touch the foundation of America. These acts shatter steel, but they cannot dent the steel of American resolve. America was targeted for attack because we're the brightest beacon for freedom and opportunity in the world, and no one will keep that light from shining. Today our nation saw evil, the very worst of human nature, and we responded with the best of America, with the daring of our rescue workers, with the caring of, for strangers and neighbors who came to give blood and help in any way they could. Today, the earth stood still. In London and Paris and Lisbon and Stockholm and Berlin, in cities great and small, in grand public squares, in offices and shops, in schools, everything stopped. In places where they too have suffered the pain of death by terrorism, in Belfast, in Lockerbie. And amidst the broader outpouring of sympathy, poignant gestures. These are firefighters in Budapest, saluting their fallen colleagues far away. These are stockbrokers in London. Until today, the words and gestures of support around the world had been largely official and diplomatic. Today, it got personal. We're devastated. It's absolutely tragic. And the sense of tragedy wasn't the only sentiment that was being shared with Americans. Well, one's initial reaction is to just go and nail the bastards. Excuse the language. The unity had another extraordinary expression today at St. Paul's Cathedral in London where the Star Spangled Banner began an emotionally charged memorial service. The Queen attended and the great and the good of official London, but so did thousands of others, many Americans, many not. And thousands more outside jammed the streets around the cathedral. It was as close to America as you could get, especially if you couldn't get home. You feel helpless being here because you can't, and not that there's much we could do at home, but it just, it's just difficult. They prayed in their multitudes in London and in Berlin, or they prayed alone, the Pope at his retreat outside Rome. Governments paused here too. Politicians stopped their arguments from Helsinki to Brussels. The European Union's leader, Romano Prati, summed it up. In the darkest days of history, he said, America stood close by us, and today we stand close by America. And everyone here knows what that means. Our objective will be to bring to account those who have organized, aided, abetted, and incited this act of infamy. And those that harbor or help them have a choice, either to cease their protection of our enemies, or be treated as an enemy themselves. But it was the people who spoke loudest in their silence and in Warsaw in song. 
The liberties now threatened by terrorism are nowhere more appreciated than in Eastern Europe. The final word of the day, though, may have been uttered by a woman in Paris. Today, she said, we are all Americans. Mark Phillips, CBS News, London. Our country and the world as a whole have been greatly affected by terrorism. Terroristic attacks from the 1920s to today have fundamentally changed the way we live our lives. It has impacted people in every facet of life from daily commutes to intercontinental travel. It has had a profound impact historically artistically and politically. Also as a disabled veteran, the impact of terrorism has been great on myself, my family, and many of my friends. The topic of terrorism and how it impacts individuals internationally can be characterized in more than one discipline. First and foremost, it resides in a historical category. There is a very identifiable timeline of specific events that can be retrieved and followed. The specific actions of terrorists and victims can be followed chronologically. These events leading up to an attack during and after can be identified and analyzed through personal accounts eyewitness testimony, and interviews conducted through research. The following is a timeline of significant terrorist events against Americans. As early as 1920, in New York City, on September the 16th, a TNT bomb planted in an unattended horse-drawn wagon exploded on Wall Street, killing 35 people and injuring hundreds more. Bolshevist or On April the 18th, 1983, in Beirut, Lebanon, the U.S. Embassy was destroyed in a suicide car bomb attack killing 63 people, including 17 Americans. The Islamic Jihad claim responsibility. October the 23rd, 1983, again in Beirut, Lebanon. Shiite suicide bombers exploded a truck near U.S. military barracks at the Beirut airport, killing 241 U.S. Marines. Minutes later, a second bomb killed 58 French paratroopers in their barracks in West Beirut. On February the 26, 1993, in New York City, a bomb exploded in basement garage of the World Trade Center, killing six and injuring at least 1,040 others. Al-Qaeda involvement is suspected. On April the 19, 1995, in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, a car bomb exploded outside the Federal Office Building, collapsing walls and floors. 168 people were killed, including 19 children and one person who died in the rescue effort. Over 220 buildings sustained damage. Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols, later convicted in the anti-government plot to avenge the Branch Davidian standoff in Waco, Texas, exactly two years earlier. September the 11th, 2001, New York City, Arlington, Virginia, and Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Hijackers crashed two commercial jets into Twin Towers of the World Trade Centers. Two more hijacked jets were crashed into the Pentagon and a field in rural Pennsylvania. 
Total dead and missing numbered 2,992. 2,749 in New York City, 184 at the Pentagon, 40 in Pennsylvania, and 19 hijackers. Islamic Al-Qaeda terrorist group was blamed. December the 25th, 2009, a Nigerian male on a flight from Amsterdam to Detroit attempted to ignite an explosive device hidden in his underwear. The explosive device that failed to detonate was a mixture of powder and liquid that did not alert security personnel in the airport. The alleged bomber told officials later that he was directed by the terrorist group Al-Qaeda. The suspect was already on the government's watch list when he attempted the bombing. On April the 15th, 2013, in Boston, Massachusetts, multiple bombs explode near the finish line of the Boston Marathon. Three people are killed, and one is an eight-year-old boy. More than 260 people are injured. The two suspects are brothers and had been living together in Cambridge. They have lived in the United States for about a decade, but they are from an area near Chechnya, a region in Russia. The impact of terrorism on people can also be seen throughout the arts. There are documentaries of these events depicted through film and print that help convey the feelings and impact it has had on people. There have been many mainstream movies made that are based on true stories and events that create a vivid picture for the individuals that did not personally witness these events. This was greatly seen after the events on September 11, 2001, because many people stood and watched in horror as their loved ones were trapped inside the two towers. There were an overwhelming amount of personal accounts, photographs, and video of what took place that morning. America and our friends and allies join with all those who want peace and security in the world. And we stand together to win the war against terrorism. Tonight I ask for your prayers for all those who grieve, for the children whose worlds have been shattered, for all whose sense of safety and security has been threatened. And I pray they will be comforted by a power greater than any of us, spoken through the ages in Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. This is a day when all Americans from every walk of life unite in our resolve for justice and peace. America has stood down any enemies before, 
and we will do so this time. None of us will ever forget this day, yet we go forward to defend freedom and all that is good and just in our world. Thank you. Good night.